This is RangerCast, episode 22, Cosmic Fury episode discussion, episodes 1 through 3, recorded on Tuesday, November 7th, 2023. In this episode, Don Brothers hits People Magazine, Amy Joe Johnson's comic series nears release, and all the Power Rangers toys Power Rangers fans aren't getting. All right, this is RangerCast. As always, I am Tyler, better known as Rudolph Volto. And first, I have Mike with me. Hello, everybody. Thanks for having me back here. I am, in fact, Mike. I am not a scab of myself. It's the real thing. And Josh. Rigged. Rigged, I tell you. Rigged! Oh! Hi, everybody. How's everybody doing? Everybody's doing fine, I, I, I hope. Yeah, sorry, we've kind of uh, gone off the grid, so to speak, for a month or so. It was not intentional. You know, life, all that. You know, say this podcast going to try to be, you know, every other week, but folks have lives. Uh, I was staffing New York Con in Baltimore, which went great. It is, it is. You know, but be sure to keep in the loop on new episodes by liking us on Facebook, following us on Twitter, um, you know, subscribing to r slash power rangers on reddit where we are all over the place uh but we do have uh you know fair bit of news and then later on we have discussions uh of the first three episodes of power rangers cosmic fury again sorry for the delay so first things first uh some news out of funko pop they are selling a uh funko pop uh dinosaur at target to celebrate the 30th anniversary, it was uh, offered on October 27th as part of the Funko Friday. Uh, it is still available for pre-order on Target's website. It's $14.99, and, oh, pre-orders have sold out. Never mind then. Uh, so find on eBay, I guess, after December 3rd. Uh, it does look cool, uh, and I like the design of the box. It has the, the dinosaur in the back of the 30th anniversary logo. And I look forward to, I guess, not being able to buy one. I don't know what the general consensus is about the the Funko Pop Tyrannosaur Zord. Uh, I have conceded a long time ago that Funko Pops are not for me. I'm not one of those people that's just going to collect a figure just to have it sit there. I know there's a huge market for it. I know that FYE and Spencer Gifts would not exist anymore if it weren't for these things. Um, So I understand that this product is not for me. I do think it looks kind of cool. I understand that I don't know how well it fits in with other figures that they may have offered. I assume it's the same size as all the other ones. Most it of the is. other Funko yeah. Pops, I know they've made larger ones for various other franchises. Um, the only thing that gets me, really, and I've noticed this in many other design choices in the past, they love emphasizing the cannons inside the mouth of the Dinozord. <laughs> Which is weird because that is next to never used in the show. And I just love how they latch on to that because it's really the only distinguished feature besides the cockpit on top of the head. I, I'm in agreement. I have no comment on it because unless it's something I'm getting for an autograph, I'm indifferent on Funko. Um, it was cool when they did Dragonzord and Megazord. I think it's, I personally think it's weird they're doing the T Rex with one. I don't know what market it's trying to reach besides maybe very, very, very small Power Ranger one, but I don't know. Yeah, they're not going to get anybody new to buy Power Rangers Funko Pops by releasing this, because anyone who buys this is already going to own the other ones. Yeah. Now, as for toy news, we didn't get, actually, part of the reason why we didn't feel much of a hurry to put out this episode is Hasbro teased their annual Hasbro Pulse Premium 1027 event, which happened on October 27th. Uh, but they were pretty clear in the run-up based on the hashtags they used that there would be no Power Rangers news, and indeed there was no Power Rangers news. I think I saw a screenshot. It was like one of those things where you had to enhance, enhance, enhance to find any admission that they even owned Power Rangers. Uh, so it's like, you know, Rodney Dangerfield joke at this point. Yeah, but from... From a business standpoint, I do understand that they don't want to focus on what they're not going to be offering. 
because that's just opening up the floodgates for yeah well i mean it's like how much they're not offering it you know there's so many things in cosmic fury that we're not getting toys of that in the bandai years would be all over the place yeah i mean i'm not saying i want bandai back exactly you know let me be clear but come on it's you know it's like this almost this uncaring for whatever the show is doing that would normally scream, you know, make a toy out of that. Like it's the, like it's the such... original suits. Hmm? I feel like this is also um, a consequence of Hasbro just owning so many things at this point. So I'm, I just get the impression that they're just trying to cast as wide of a net as they possibly can and try to appeal to as many people as they can. We all know that Hasbro, while they own Power Rangers doesn't see it as a viable asset, which considering the show's not going to is there's no there's nothing happening in the future. So I can understand them not wanting to focus on it, because if they did focus on it and they st- there's no longevity for new fans be like, hey, you want to have this new toy line that's available for three months and then you're not going to get anything else because there's no more show. Way so back want- when way back when Hasbro first got the toy rights. One of the things that fans were attracted by was the fact that Hasbro, being a much larger company, could wheel and deal to get Power Rangers more shelf space at the big box stores. Uh, That happened for about five minutes. And then that shelf space kind of went away so they could sell more G.I. Joes or whatever. I mean, you know what this just means. What? It just means that we broke the bank by that Cosmic Fury uh, Morpher toy. That's what it really came down to. <sighs> oh, boy. And we are also getting kind of a trickle of more details about the uh, Amy Jo Johnson comic series. Or rather, it's covered by her and her boyfriend, Matt Hodson. Mighty, Morph- Mighty Morphin Power Rangers The Return. Boom Studios is doing what they call their direct reserve program, where they pop it on Kickstarter. Uh, All we know is that the Kickstarter is coming, uh, and we know that the artist is one Nico Leon, um, who's a different artist from the uh, one from the the anniversary comic. He's an artist who's worked for Marvel and DC... uh, He's done some Fantastic Four, some Hulk, Catwoman, and I haven't really read any of his work before, but uh, I understand that uh, Amy Jo Johnson and Matt Hodson were going through a lot of different artist work before they uh, narrowed it down to him. And I really look forward to seeing actual pages. Off the top of my head, I I think it's coming early. I think it's hitting shelves early next year. And you know, this Kickstarter, you know, however it does, doesn't mean that it won't hit shelves still. It's just, you know, if you get it this way, it'll probably come with, you know, a variant cover or autograph, something like that, depending how much you put in. I'm kind of tired of these things, though. So you, you both of you know my opinion on it. Um, I I very genuinely do enjoy the Boom Studios comics. I'm very much enjoying right now the storyline um, that for Darkest Hour. But I also hold the same opinion that I do of, all right, we're going to release a cover and we're going to give you like 45 different variant covers for you to collect. I'm looking at you, Power Rangers, and I'm looking at you, Gargoyles. Yeah, I know Gargoyles is catching some strays out here. No different than uh, this one. I'm sorry, boom. I absolutely hate that you keep putting this on kickstarter i have no shame in saying this of at some point your company take responsibility for your product and either do pre-orders or don't have a kickstarter i have no shame of saying you're not making something like board games where it's like yeah you don't want something sitting on the shelf because it costs a lot of money to make miniatures i get that i understand that Comic book, no. Just do X amount, call it a day. I, I don't like this. I didn't like when they did the Kickstarter to try to push the, uh, the limited edition books and stuff, too, for stuff that's coming out next year. I think it's a scam. I think that's a pyramid scheme. 
that's just my two cents. I'll be buying the comic as a normal release, but yeah, I'm not not a fan of it going to Kickstarter. Not at all. And I, that is hand, my hill. <laughs> I mean, me personally, I'm not going to do it, but there are fans who do do it, and I haven't heard of anybody who has done this and been unhappy with you know the autographed whatever that they get out of it. It's just weird that they're advertising so heavily as being from Amy Jo Johnson, who is not known as a writer i guess she isn't but she's known as power ranger yeah but that doesn't mean that you're immediately qualified to do everything with the franchise i'm I'm gonna throw that i don't want samuel benta scoring the next movie it also doesn't qualify you to be putting it on kickstarter it's not like she's putting on on there herself no and that's why I, i put that on boom of boom to me that's like if marvel wants to put a spider man on there it's like do you have that little faith in your comic that you have to put it on kickstarter or was the contract so big you have to put it on kickstarter that's again i could gripe about that for a full podcast episode but well she hadn't written the movie or directed a movie until 2016 but that didn't stop her from writing and directing a few a, a couple movies and some tv i have no problem i'm let me let it be known as I stand on my hill that I die on. I have no problems with her writing it. I just I don't like how Boom keeps approaching this because I think that's not what Kickstarter is supposed to be. It's not to be using this as a limited edition platform. It's meant to be you print what it is so it doesn't eat uh, the cost for it. And it's also meant mm-hmm. so you can go to other countries for shipping purposes, not for. I would say the same thing if Marvel did it. I would say the same thing if DC Comics did it or a if Disney did it. No, guys, you need to eat the cost. No, but I I'm, mean, I'm looking at it as of, a more macro. There are a lot of things on Kickstarter that could probably not be on Kickstarter. Oh, well, it's I like agree. the old maxim. You need to spend money to make money, but now businesses are trying to avoid that spend money part. Correct. Like, like right now, there is a Dracula comic that has, you know, one hundred and ninety three thousand nine hundred seven dollars like nearly two hundred thousand dollars against a six hundred six six dollar goal. So it's something that we're gonna make anyway, but this Kickstarter is basically free press. But is it made by someone independent? A uh, small comic publisher in California. I'm okay with that. If it's a small comic publisher, more power to them. Boom I mean, is Boom, no is, boom a... isn't Boom isn't Marvel. Boom's also mm-hmm. not a small public com- uh, comic publisher either. That was just one I plucked off the front page of Kickstarter. But it makes me wonder uh, how much is the Kickstarter meant to be marketing towards people who are already familiar with the Boom Comics versus people who may not know that a comic book series even exists. I mean, like, I think the important thing is that people pay their money and get a- and get what they want. You know, it's not... It's not a scam if people know exactly what they're getting for what amount of money. It's called the return, not the order, Tyler. (laughs) And if they get that thing, unlike the order. So moving on, Renegade Game Studios is now offering 3D printing for certain RPG minis, including Finster, Draken, uh, Tizon, Pumpkin Wrapper. Uh, You have to buy the designs... Well, no, excuse me. You have to buy. You have to buy the normally for getting like regularly, but certain uh, designs will be free f- for test printing. Uh, Finster is one. Uh, the others are not available just yet. Let me let me re-record that whole sentence. Actually, uh, also, meanwhile, on Renegade Games, they are starting to offer certain RPG mini designs for three D printing, including Finster. Uh, normally you have to pay for these uh, 3D printed designs. Uh, you know, I'm not sure if they plan to make any other ones free. Uh, otherwise, you do have to pay for the designs and print them out yourself at the library or whatever. See, now that's where I love this idea because as someone who runs the RPG, um, the what they're doing with the miniatures are the are the things that are usually included because if you take a look at the sculpts they're pretty much the exact thing you're going to find in heroes of the grid but if you're running the rpg you don't want to pay 50 60 dollars for a expansion just to get the miniatures 
um, for it. So this is to me is a great compromise of, Hey, we're going to, um, you pay 10 bucks for whatever it is. Here's the design for it. Go forth, use it for your RPG. I love that idea because it also, it's like any major villain or something, or if you want to just paint it for yourself, like, uh, these are great test products and you don't have to ruin like the mold or something you have. If you do have heroes of the grid for it, I love it. Um, I think more companies should do that. Um, if they have uh, products that uh, span across multiple iterations of their games, I would love to see them do that for Transformers, GI Joe, My Little Pony, you name it. When what else? Three D. I have many thoughts about three D printing in general. Uh, I like it because it's kind of you know how with video games you can buy a digital copy of stuff, with movies you can buy a digital copy of stuff. This is kind of a similar idea where it's like, okay, you want to have this figurine? Fine, we'll give you the code that you need in order to make it and you can print it yourself. There's less waste in the world. You know, if you want to generate the device out of plastic or resin or whatever it is, the 3d printer uses, I think it's just a plastic carbon or something like that. And then you can make it on your own. Um, maybe this will be a discussion for another day, but I could definitely see Toei and many regular toy lines, GI Joe power Rangers. If, if it should ever, you know, come back from the grave deluxe line toys instead of going to the store to buy the toy you gotta buy the 3d printing model and you have to print it out yourself yeah i think, I think that's this is a good future. intro as well for like uh model kits or for like if you i think it's going to be that first stage of if you want it, um, it's not going to be nearly as good as um, what you could buy at the store if you want the packaging and all that. But if you solely just want it for like test purposes or posing purposes, hey, that's easy enough for it. Um, I'm, I, I like the idea. I think they're, I think they're being very uh, uh, forefronts about it. I think it's almost like a Hero Forge type of deal, and I love it. Yeah, cannot state it enough. <laughs> and moving on, there's some pop culture news. Uh. There was uh, there were some photos that made the rounds uh, around Halloween that kind of put my mind in the wayback machine when I read the headline uh, from People Magazine. Larry Burkhead made her daughter made Larry Burkhead made his daughter Danny Lynn's Avatar inspired Avatar inspired. That's the phrase in the headline. Halloween costume for 3D model. So it was a costume out of Dawn Brothers, and she you know. To refresh your memory, I'm not sure how old our audience is, but Danny Lynn Burkhead is Anna Nicole Smith's daughter. And they kind of been living pretty uh, pretty much out of the limelight uh, for the last 16 years or so. But apparently she is a huge fan of Sentai and such. And she told her father sure that... Watches legally. I'm sure that, uh, you know, John Toy is probably going to, you know, kick down the door or something. Uh, but anyway, her father says that she came to him a few weeks ago and said she wanted to be Oni's sister for Halloween. So, quote, I believe I brushed it off and said, sure, we have plenty of time for that. Fast forward to me finding out they, didn't, they don't sell the costumes in stores. So I had to make it from scratch based on a 3D model. It's the first time I attempted that before, but I figure we're approaching the end of the trick-or-treat phase, or maybe not, so I told her I would try my best. After hours and hours, People Magazine writes, he presented his version of the costume, quote, that she's reminded me numerous times, is not a Power Ranger. That article tickles my pickle, because it's really trying to avoid affiliation with Power Rangers. The only time that it's even mentioned is the not a Power Ranger, like in denial. It doesn't mention uh, the Sentai Power Rangers connection. It doesn't really mention what the show is. It just says Japanese tokusatsu without even... I mean, it's kind of cool that People Magazine can just say tokusatsu and not have to define it. That kind of says something. But honestly, yeah, it's cool. But first of all, who cares? (laughs) <laughs> really <laughs> like yay this girl was like daddy make me a halloween costume make this okay like that's it must have been a really slow news week of people for that to make the article secondly i don't know that much about don brothers so i can't justify 
whether it's even a good costume or not, but it doesn't really look rangery in the photo. Like the photo that's provided in the article is helmetless, so it's just kind of like the, I feel if like you, people... if you scroll down, you can see the helmet. Oh, okay. I also feel like you wouldn't really tell that it's Sentai just because, you know, you just see a solid yellow suit by itself. Maybe it's just by Red Ranger bias or something like that. But I feel like it does not automatically come off as Sentai or Power Rangers or anything like that. And I know the Don Brothers suits are weird. I know that they're a little bit left to center. But I don't know. The entire article is just bizarre that it's even in existence. I mean, it's cute. It's a heartwarming story. It shows that he's a good dad, that he actually took the time to do it. But I think for me, it reminds me of uh, when I was a kid and I was cosplaying Oticon and my mom's coworker's wife made me a Green Ranger costume. And you had me send her photos, all that. I went shopping with her for fabrics and even got a shield that, let's just say intentionally, uh, resembles the uh, American one. Very, like, very foam, very bouncy. Uh, But it was really cool, you know. And I appreciate that she, you know, went, like, went the extra mile to, like, glue on the... uh, the Morpher replica that I bought on eBay. And it looked whack, but it was still, like, it was still mine. And it was still, it was still special. And I think that, that, like, you know, the fact that her dad did this for her is not something she's going to soon forget. I have no, I, I have a general no opinion on it because I just don't. I, I'm indifferent on it. Um, it's more I of a think befuddlement it's great on my that she can. Mm-hmm. Like, is this the first huh. time Super Sentai has been mentioned in any sort of American-based publication ever? I think in the context of articles about Power Rangers and about Haim Saban, I think it might have been mentioned. But just, this is a Sentai and not Power Rangers article, and that's... I yeah. don't think this has ever happened, so that is just kind of, like, interesting. Yeah, yeah. Angela I Andaloro, recall. I don't know anything about yeah. the person who wrote the article, but... Just saying, what, what's her what's her R slash Power Rangers username is all I'm trying to say. She, she on Ranger Board? Um, but I was staying in Japan. Uh, Toei, following the Harakenja and Abaranger 20th anniversary movies, naturally announced one for Decker Ranger, uh, along with a special edition SP license, all that. The movie was filmed already in... Kochi Prefecture in Kyoto, and the original cast will be back. There will be a new upgrade for Decca Red, all that. Uh, the Blu-ray, DVD, and Firewall Booster SP-1 toy are all available for pre-order from Premium Bandai, which if you're in Japan, you know, go to town, get it. Uh, the logline is, The six detectives with burning hearts and cool fights once again come together in the face of the great plan that threatens the peace of the planet. I love it. I hope they bring something like this to the comic um, for that, because I do like the upgrades that they're giving the suits. Um, I am curious just <clears throat> uh, that for for the American equivalent, why they're so focused on, I think it's Dino Thunder, SPD, and Ninja Storm for this. I have no idea why um, for that, because each of them is getting like, their own special stuff. Um, but hey, I'm here for it. More more material for me to use in Power Rangers RPG. The means maybe they're limited to those for seasons in for Sentai because the cast keep wanting to come back. It helps that yeah. two of the Decca Rangers are married. Yeah, and um, it, when they dubbed Power Rangers SPD in Japanese, it was the Decca Ranger cast that did that. Uh, but the movie is going to have limited screening in the summer twenty twenty four with Blu-ray and DVD to follow that fall. Uh, I am not sure when the new uh, SP license, or excuse me, when the new uh, the new toy comes out, but there is also the SP license, which was announced in, in September, and 
will be available on Premium Bandai's website until November 24th of this year. And shipments of that will start in March 2024. You might be able to get all this stuff from Token Collectibles. That's not a plug. I'm just saying that they usually carry this stuff. 11,000 yen, I believe that is about $80 at this point. I don't know what the exchange rate is at this moment. 73 the yen, bucks. The yen is crashing. Yeah, it's been crashing for a couple months now at least. Yeah, I think it hit 150 to the dollar. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, if only I had the money to actually go to Japan, you know, load up. Cha-ching. Yeah. And all further, Toy Toku, Toku Sentai Nostalgia, Kyoryujer turned up on King Ojer. The uh, four, four of the five core Kyoryujers, along with King's son, turned up on episodes 32 and 33 of Osama Sentai King Ojer. I haven't seen the episodes yet, but of course there was a new toy to go with that too. King's son is named Prince. But the rest of the cast, including Ayuri Kono, who was otherwise totally super duper retired from acting, came back. I'm torn on this. I've not seen King Ojer. The most recent Sentai I've seen is uh, Kira Major. So I've been out of the Sentai game for a couple years. Need to catch up on it too, yeah. I've been out of the Sentai game for a couple years now. I'm torn because... What year was Kira Ujer? 2014? 2012? How long ago now? Um, regardless... 20, 20, 2013. 2013, because it's I feel the, like it's, the 10th anniversary. I feel like it's getting almost Marvel level with the amount of crossovers we're having when it's, like, in the show, how it's, like, a stealth sequel to Kill Ruger. Um, I know a lot of people have been complaining about Marvel's cinematic universe being way too in-depth and how much homework you have to do to fully enjoy something. And I just worry that... Sentai might be doing that too. Like, are they that concerned? Because from what I've read, the general consensus is that King Ojer is quite good. But I worry that were they not confident enough in the show where they needed to graft on this Kyoryuger nostalgia for the I think it's just that pe- people like Kyoryuger, uh, you know, Most just like people are... like Deno. And Deno was probably a bit overexposed by the time they did like the the fifth movie or whatever, and Go Kaiger, at least until recently, we're going to get to that, uh, has come back a bunch of times. But I'm just like, does everything need an anniversary now? Do they have these contracts where people are only signing on if they get paid to do a show, and then they get paid 10 years later to do something else? I mean, Can't my things just stand on, on their own? No. I think... You know, as long as the cash register keeps ringing, whatever. I mean, are the Sentai toy sales doing that well? I haven't looked at at uh, Bandai's recent numbers, but people seem to be f- feeling good about. I know Kyoryuja was extremely profitable for them toy wise. Yeah, I mean, dinos sell. Same thing's true in America. We like our dinosaurs. We just don't like to believe they exist half the time. And Garo is coming back too. There's going to be a brand new Garo show. People were kind of confused here a bit. Thought thought they were announcing like Pachinko or something like that. But there is going to be a new Garo series titled Hagane Otsugumono that it translates to Garo, the one who inherits steel, celebrating the 10th anniversary of Yamio Tadasumono, the one who shines in darkness. It will star Wataru Kuriyama reprising his role as uh, as Yuga, and he will still be the protagonist, but this will be the first time he will hold the key to the plot of the series. This is according to Tokusatsu Network. The crew includes Yasuhiro Matsuda, who previously directed uh, episodes of Garo Makai Nohana, Makai Flower, and Goldstorm Show. And the other directors come from police dramas and other action productions like Death Trance. And the screenwriters include uh, Norikatsu Kurama and Ryuji Yoshizaki, uh, both of whom are from the screenwriting agency Queen Bee. Tokusatsu Network doesn't list any other Toku credits for them. And the new series will begin airing in January of next year on Tokyo MX and Nitere from January to March of next year. 
I'm excited for Morgaro. Uh, I really wish that people actually bought it when it was available in the States. Otherwise, we might, you know, have hope of this coming here, but we're not going to get Yami Otadasumono either. Morgaro has always been on my to-do list of things to watch. I've never seen any of them. Maybe maybe I'll start watching it in 2024. I'll start from the beginning. So there's not that many seasons of Garo. I've heard right. uh, Garo VR is excellent. Yeah. Um, the original series and Red, Re- Red Requiem, say, that's easy to say, are good places to start. Uh, but it's like Yamio Tadasumono is like this kind of alternate timeline. You like You can watch that without knowing everything else about Garo. I mean, Garo as a whole, like, like I said, I haven't seen it. I also feel like not a lot of people talk about it in general. So for something like this to be getting this kind of uh, spotlight, is, is nice to see the lesser represented series getting some love, too. Yeah, and I, I think it was an important series. Plus there's uh, boobs. People love boobs. Right, yeah. Like, not just for being a toku for adults, but also what it accomplished in terms of action and special effects for the time. And the special, like, you know, today the effects in the original series look kind of whack, but for the time they were pretty good. And for more Garo stuff maybe in 2024, because Lord knows we'll need something to talk about. Yeah, now pivoting to serious stuff. Uh, I'm not sure if we talked about this in the show, but a few months back, we may have mentioned that Junya Ikeda, who was in Yamio Tarasumono, as well as Gokaiger, where he was Gokai Silver, he was out there asking for fan mail, saying he was depressed that maybe you know letters might cheer him up. Uh, I think we got a sense of why he might have been depressed. Because uh, last week, it came out from his agency that he had been arrested for alleged fraud, and that therefore they were canceling his contract, and all the shows with which he was involved would be recasting him. Now, according to the Yomiuri Shimbun, the police say Ikeda and an accomplice posed with a police posed as a police officer and visited the home of a man living in Kotoku in Tokyo and defrauded him of his cash card. There is reportedly CCTV video related to the crime. Now, according to the Japan Federation of Bar Associations, special fraud is kind of like America's wire fraud statute. It's a term that refers to a scam that defrauds random unacquainted persons out of money or property over the phone or other communication tools by leading the victims to transfer money to a designated account or by other means, which include various bank transfers and uh, frauds and other other things like you know proposing a contract, providing like information on how to win at gambling, providing a dating service. Now, besides his roles in Gokaija and Garo, his other roles include uh, playing voicing Joe in Digimon Adventure: Last Evolution Kizuna and the uh, Digimon Tri films. Uh, he's also done some voices on Ensemble Stars, the Mag- Majestic Prince series, uh, Trigun Stampede. But all the current roles that he's doing, those are being handed over to other people. Uh, oops. Oops, indeed. I will withhold all comments until a verdict is handed out. Yeah, well, the thing about the Japanese justice system is it's they have like a 99% conviction rate. So he's probably screwed. Uh-oh, SpaghettiOs. <laughs> and in even more serious news, another thing we might have talked about previously, uh, Ika Darville from RPM, he had a GoFundMe going for his son Mana, who was diagnosed with a rare form of brain cancer. We learned just the other day that over the weekend he 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 died after that battle with brain cancer. He was only ten years old. The whole thing is just so tragic. They they were trying all sorts of things, you know, wherever they could look for help in the states, uh, Australia, where wherever you know, even finding a spiritual advisor, all of that, and it's just so I, I, unfathomable. I can't imagine 
what that family is going through. To lose a child such a young, it just doesn't make sense. It Tragic is exactly the word I would use. It's very unfortunate. I agree. And you're looking at the GoFundMe, you saw all sorts of people who had worked with him uh, backing backing Mana's care, including some anonymous people who gave really, really large sums to help with travel, childcare, all that. Because during this time, Stryker, no, he wasn't working. He was busy taking care of his kid, which obviously absolutely right thing to do. But uh, donors whose GoFundMe included RPM writer Madeleine Paxson, uh, Luke Coulter, or excuse me, uh, Mike Coulter, uh, Charlie Cox, people he'd worked with at Marvel and and on Power Rangers, uh, and you know, we're just we're just gonna be we're just thinking of him. So we're gonna take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to have discussions of the first three episodes of Cosmic Fury. Be right back. My nephew, like the Power Rangers, and I did this on his birthday where he had all his friends around. They were like, Green Ranger, I said, let me show you the real Sentai. I'm going to show you the episode where Green Ranger actually died. And they were sitting there looking, a couple of kids start crying like, no, oh, Green Ranger can't be daddy. And the parents were like, what are you showing our kids? The Anime World Order podcast. Not suitable for children because the truth hurts. Visit us online at www.animeworldorder.com. And we are back. Uh, we are ready to finally discuss the first three episodes of Cosmic Fury, which are, all of them actually are available on Netflix. Now we're going to try to keep discussion limited to these first three episodes, but if we reference things from after that, the show has been out for a month now, so, you know, but if you're really nervous about spoilers, maybe shut this episode off and... Go finish the show. I, I don't know what to tell you. The reason why we're divvying this up for anyone who may be interested is because, you know, with the Netflix model, with 10 25-minute episodes getting dumped all at once, it's kind of difficult to talk about all 10 of them simultaneously because they're obviously each episode has things that happen, especially with the way that the narrative is structured. So it is best for us to take them um, chunks at a time, which is why we're only doing the first three, even though all 10 dropped at the same time. Yeah, yeah. And I, I watched them all in a day. I don't know what you're talking about. You have more free time oh, than I, I do, was, friend. I was just going to crack the joke to say, uh, but but how are we going to talk about, you know, the sequels to Power Ranger, Gun Gale Online, Power Rangers, Alicization? You know, I'm just kidding. I will do my best. And yes, you have way more free time if you watch it all in one sitting. But anyway, uh, the uh, first episode, Lightning Strikes, as promised, picks up basically right where Donnie Fury left off with the Rangers on a distant alien planet on Zordnia, which is actually a callback to Change of the Zords. It is the planet where the Shogun Zords were found. But the episode starts at 11. There's this big, big like drone shot of this you know, throw down with the Rangers and Billy and the Morphin Masters and various mooks, including the, the champ suit from Q-Ranger, which I guess use it if you got it. And it's just this beautiful shot that's a, a location that Power Rangers hasn't used before. And it, you, even if it's still a Power Rangers budget, that was a hell of a thing to see to start off the show. Season 2 of Dino Fury pulled a similar stunt as well with their first episode. You gotta start big with the season. I get it. It's a good move. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we see Zed being greeted by new villains Bajillia and Squillionaire, which are original designs, but unlike the Cosmic Fury suits, uh, these were built by Toy and Rainbow Zoke back in Japan. And I really like those yeah. designs. I do too. Um, I, I don't have any problems with them. I, I don't love them, but they don't bother me. There's one thing I want to point out that I really do like if with this being cosmic fear for it, um, regardless of people's opinions on the suit for it, we know why they did a little tiny redesign of Lord Zed solely because they wanted him to move around a whole lot. They said they could not, they were very limited on Lord Zed 
previously. So that's why we got steroid Lord Zed. That being said, you can actually see the evolution of like where the designs come from because Lord Zed's very much a classic look of, and I don't mean of, oh yeah, because he's from Mighty Morphin. Um, a classic look of the old school less CGI versus when you look at the squids and stuff who have the glowing eyes and everything like that. I, I like being able to see both of those on screen and seeing where we've come from from 30 years mm-hmm. uh, from that. Speaking yeah. of changes to Lord Zed, the yeah, very I was going to get that. I noticed is the new voice of Lord Zed, and I remember Fred messaging Tyler as I was yeah. watching the episode. Um, I don't. I will say Andrew Lang did not deserve any of the comments or hatred that he got. Fred is so much better at that voice. Yeah, I. You know, he wouldn't normally but, be in the Rolodex of of production and on Power Rangers, but. You know, it's just so much closer because he like he has that kind of voice in his back pocket. I'm I I'm gonna be the lone dissenter. I have no real opinion on it because I know there's plenty of people who are like, This is a great voice actor to get. There were I've seen too many people go, Who? So oh, I, I was I, one of them. I'm just saying that I thought he did a good job with the role. I'm not familiar with his work. I would never point him out by name. Oh, well, That's there you go. Me. There's a great example of that, because I, th- I've i seen a lot of camps of, oh, everyone's going to love this. I've seen more of all, and I'm just throwing this out here as a number, but I'm throwing, I'll say majority of people, like, I don't know who this person is. He has a great well, filmography when you look it up, but he if, is not as much of a well-public figure as I think many well, like people a lot, thought. A lot of people don't know who Frank Welker is, but he is still one of the most legendary voice actors of all time. Uh, Fred Tanishore is you know, also one of those people who productions go to literally all the time. Like if you hear the Hulk in animation and it's not Armin Taylor, it's him. And he is just in all, like he has, has all these roles as additional voices because like where he's credited like that because he is so useful. Because he can do all, all these sorts of characters. So when I saw his name in the credits, I did a double take because I realized how serious they were on getting on getting Zed right, even though again I really hate that this is the you know, the reasons that led them to after he cast Zed again. We will talk about them getting Zed quote unquote right later. I think they did okay. And I have the- thoughts. The one thing I will say on Welker, and I think, to, uh, Rito, I think, Tyler, I think you hit the nail on the head because he does so many additional voices. People didn't, it's not something that they can identify and think of it being like a Tara Strong or a Steve Bloom where you know who they are. And I think that's why it's nail on the head of a lot of people because, um, when I'm, I've listened to it, I had to go look at his stuff. And sure, I, I know some of his stuff now, but like you couldn't have told me he was Nibbler in Futurama at all. And I, to me, that's a – I think that's a marketing issue for that. I digress on that, though. Back to the – his voice, I, I'm indifferent on it as Zed. Um, I have nothing against it, but it's not my favorite. I think stuff could have been done a little bit different. But – it doesn't it doesn't change it i think i think how he sold it as the mannerisms was much better agreed and i kind of like the new suit i i like the uh the slim yes. good body kind of muscle suit going on underneath the metal um i was able to tell that they did something to the suit but i did not mind i didn't notice zed being nimbler than he had been in the past but again, I I noticed that something was different, but I was just like, eh, doesn't bother me. Also, there like Zed is moving around a lot more than he would back in the old days. Yeah, like in the old days, like it was minimal movement, and they added like the more practical effects of like water on it to make it shine in the uh um what you call um camera the effect practical effects versus. Uh, now where he can move around. I mean, we 
out if y'all remember back in when he first appeared uh, we had the, the the running water essentially in the um his um cords the veins and stuff for however you want to say it they went more like that well this one is like yeah we can actually use him for it so i appreciate that and they even said they updated the suit a little bit more to slim him down versus steroid version um we saw in season two one whenever it was so anyway when we see the rangers and billy billy has his power lands out and i like something they actually i'm kind of getting ahead of myself something they do with the uh core team as well they always have their ranger weapons out they don't need to summon them they're all they always have them and they're they always are using them and i think that was a really great decision i am tired uh, of seeing billy with lance the, i'm tired yeah. of it I, he uses not, the lance what? more in Cosmic Fury than he has ever used it in Mighty Morphin. Well, that was yeah, a byproduct I of the footage it. because they never, they rarely used those weapons in the Jew Ranger footage. I understand yeah. that, but it's like maybe the Blade it's Blaster. just a, um, I don't know if it's like an edict that's uh, coming down from up above. I like that they, they're using the weapons too much as a whole. I, I'm jumping ahead, especially with the Cosmic Fury weapons, but. Fights, fights in general lately, I feel, are way more weapons-based than hand-to-hand. And again, maybe it's something that they have to do due to, you know, children seeing violence on television or whatever. I don't I, get the reasoning behind I have it. an answer for that, actually. Fun fact, I actually do have the answer for this, and I know that makes me sound like a know-it-all. You see more weapons because that's less martial arts, less um, uh, possibility of your actors getting hurt on set. That is the, the actual sole reason for it. <laughs> more weapons means they could do more with special effects for it. Um, you don't have to have unmore scenes, essentially. That's why. I know. I Feel free to agree, disagree for it, but that is the reason. No, it makes sense. Totally makes sense. I personally like that he was using it. Um, we, we, I feel like it's I like just wanted said, to see a, a little bit more fun. regular fighting. Like, use the Blade Blaster. You have other things at your disposal. Whip out the Power Cannon. Go for it. Where's our Thunder yeah. Slinger? I think I was only used, like, once. I mean, in Season 2, Billy, canonically, was known for making gadgets all the time. Like, the the Triceratops yeah. mirror. Like, he had a different whoosie what's it every episode. And now that he has... Cranston Tech, which which is not going against anything, it's mentioned in Cosmic Fury. It's perfectly fine. Don't get after me. Um, I Trade feel heart. like him completely abandoning that and just sticking with you know stick on a blade or blade on a stick. I feel like is very. I don't, I don't want to say a disappointment, I, but it just seems lackluster. I go with that as a that that the power lance is connected to the morphing grid and the others are not, or it's a it's not as in sync with the suit. That that's my head cannon theory. Um, I stick with that. I'm not I'm not disagreeing with you, but by keeping it where it is being used, it lets them do actual on screen filming. Yeah, it's better to be hands on. Speaking of hands on, let's talk about Javi losing his arm. We're going to get it in ourselves. <laughs> it's still the first episode. Uh, oh, yeah, that was the first episode. But yeah, anyway, I think um, it was the Morphin Masters who gave the Rangers the mission to go to Zordnia. Uh, but something that I think the show, the writers wisely observed, is that having the Morphin Masters around for any long stretch of time would be a big ass crutch. So they get sucked up into a bottle, and that's that. Oh, can can I add something to that? Because that mm-hmm. is all at the same time. I love, and I, if you, whoever has ever spoken to me, I love that they put Lord Zed on the front lines and not just like, I'm just going to watch from the hill. No, they actually had him go like, what do I do next? I'm going to go fight the Power Rangers. What's up, Billy? I love that, and I stand by that. That was one of the best things that they could do with Lord Zed. That was a biggest change from season one, two, three, four. It was, yeah, he can hold his own, guys, and we saw that. <laughs> yeah, he never really got his hands dirty back in the day. And now he only like, actually, yeah, He only actually came face-to-face with the Rangers like twice. 
Yeah, in the command center and Tommy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, no, three times. Like, three actually, times. Oh, yeah, Rangers. because the cat... The, oh, I would say four because the cat and uh, Tommy with the... Um, when they rescued the Falcon Zord and the Zeo Crystal. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. but very true, limited... If we're talking, like, combat and stuff, yeah. Only I once. Only very once. Happy the, got yeah. That. He only fought I Tommy once. very happy. Yeah. Right. But I'm very happy that we got that. And... Uh, just that was that was good i i and the um the choreography for it was really good just the oh billy it's you again oh i'm so happy you remember me after all these years like that was good so dewdrip open excuse me dewdrip turns ollie evil ollie i love dewdrip yeah and he's immediately love fired and, and and ollie now evil just totally yeet Zato off in the space. And, you know, that's like just the first <laughs> five minutes. And, A, I chuckle at that because that was the worst kept secret ever. Oh, he's going to be evil? No shit. Excuse my language. No crap. Like, everyone called that the moment they showed the premiere. Apparently, like the, 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 the reason that board. the reason that they did that, according to Simon Bennett, was because of scheduling issues. Like, you know, it wasn't clear if he'd be if he'd be available. So, now, yeah, because he was filming other projects at the time. And now, something I will add to that: mm-hmm. I personally liked it that they did that for this season. I do think people have legitimate gripes in future episodes when we review? Because I'll have my comment later on for it, but I like that he was evil and what they did with it. I will say that I really liked what Kai Moya did as Evil Ollie. I feel like of the Rangers, uh, he was the one who based on his natural personality of the, that the character already had, I feel like would have been the best suited as evil because honestly, evil Ollie and regular Ollie are not that dissimilar in personality because Ollie was kind of a snarky jerk to begin with. So I feel like, I feel like a lot of the changes in Kai Moya's acting were subtler differences than we normally get in the show. That's right. And I That's just right. really appreciated that. Like normally, when you have an evil ranger, when you have an evil ranger, they're a lot more over the top, musta- mustache twirly. Oh, ho, ho, ho. I'm gonna beat you, Power Rangers! Oh no, I loved it too. Of you could tell, and it was one of my biggest criticisms of Dino Fury. He's more like Evil Trent. Too. No, 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 no. That the acting had just yeah took a level up. Ollie's actor, 100 percent to me. Besides um, David Yost, he was like the best actor. Jordan Fight also took some notes. Jordan Fight is most like, improved to me, no question. Absolutely, I think if we can say definitely, I, I I think you could say just even not even talking about the other episodes from the first three episodes. Yes, the acting has tremendously improved tenfold. Like this is not even. I'm impressed with that and that takes a lot for me to be impressed because it's power rangers in the sense of it like a lot of that's not just a lot of that's not just you know learning you know better acting skills or subtleties or whatever it's you have they've had time to marinate being the characters they've just become more comfortable in the character's skin and knowing what they can do with it yeah and with zato gone amelia very naturally kind of settles into this like take charge role naturally well she just kind of starts giving pep talks and and it's power I, rangers everybody gives pep talks She's i mean not he, special. Or he technically gives pep talks <laughs> um, i had I, think... I don't have a problem with him i i was worried about this i had mentioned this in a previous episode of ranger cast i do not have a problem with amelia being the leader of the team. I think it's overdue, and I was just worried that they were gonna make a ham-fisted reason to do it. And they did. I really feel like the show was 
and I know we're still technically focusing on episode one and I'm jumping around a lot, but I feel like it's inevitable because the story is it's just like one 10 episode long arc as opposed to 10 individual stories with a with an exception we'll talk about in a future episode that involves a band. But I feel like they were really trying to hammer him in the point of Amelia being the leader of the team, especially when they got the new suits, like, oh, it's dark pink. Like, oh, I don't know what color this is. I must be mistaken. Oh, well, it looks like the Morphin Green must have chosen it. You must have earned the rights to be the Red Ranger. I didn't have a problem with any of that. So I didn't either. Um, now, I'd I say like this as... on the nose. So, funny enough, and, and again, I'm going to sound like a know-it-all for it, and I try not to, I've used that exact same reasoning in my Power Rangers RPG to give my players a reason for why the colors chose them, essentially, of the morphing grid works in mysterious ways, and if it thinks you are suited for this role, roll with it. That, There's that's a simple really explanation the... for that. Well, yeah. based on that, would you say that Amelia in Dino Fury and Amelia in Cosmic Fury, in terms of characterization, there's not that much difference between there, right? Like, there hasn't been that much growth. We're talking end of Dino Fury, beginning of Cosmic Fury. Besides parental, like, heritage and, you know, familial revelations, yeah. more or less the same person. If what you said is true, why wasn't she read to begin with? Oh, I'll give you a great answer for that. Same thing in my RPG, because she was the best suited to succeed at the end of the season to basically get to that point it's um um another show did this very similar and you don't find out to like seasons like the one of the late seasons it was ben 10 where it's like why do i keep randomly transforming the omnitrix turned ben into the alien that was best suited for the battle not based on what his decision was to survive at the end of the day i would tie that into here as a great power ranger thing of you received this power because we think you were best suited for the situation at hand to be able to put yourself, set your team up most to succeed for it. Yeah. But that also makes like it sound that. like Amelia is only read because Zato's not around anymore. And I really don't think that's as feminist as they think it is. Well, it wasn't just Zato who wasn't, who was out of pocket. It was Ollie was out of pocket. Uh, yeah. Two of the men aren't around. Bobby, so yeah, sure. Now you're well equipped to lead. Javi was injured, and I think that was the context in which Amelia started doing what she was doing. That's like saying if you're up for a job promotion and you're third in line, it's like, oh, the first two people died. Now we'll give you the promotion. You've earned it. I'm going to say Ollie would necessarily have been red. I, I think of it as the Amelia was best suited to become red in the moment of however you wanted to define it, and she was the only one who could reach Ollie in his story arc. For the, I, I have no exactly, problem with it. I Exactly, think, and maybe... I think it's the strongest reason we've ever gotten for, like, why individuals were chosen by the morphing grid, and not like, Rita chose Tommy because he's the Green Ranger. That's why he's green. Oh, we need Tommy back. He's the White Ranger. That's not me dissing on Tommy, but... Maybe the morphing grid thinks the... Uh... You know, the leader has to be a Rafconian. I know. It just seems like their spreadsheet. I hate when fans spreadsheet be like, oh, well, this person is best suited to be a yellow ranger because they have this personality trait that doesn't really mean anything, but I'm going to graft it on to suit my argument. And it just feels like the show is doing like, what is stopping them from having her stay pink and just say, OK, pink is now the leader color. I think at the end of the day, I think, you know, I love they that. just it decided. Matter. Color it, it, put way too much right. stock in roles for certain colors. Well, it's like end of the day, I think, you know, the writers, Simon Bennett, decided, hey, wouldn't it be cool if she were the Red Ranger and then making her the Red Ranger? You both of you know I'm a My Little Pony fan. I did you not. can tie this in as well because oh, I did not well, know that. Oh, well, so spoiler alert. You've seen in my profile pic, I'm a My Little Pony fan. Brony, whatever. In the show, there's a artifact thing called the Elements of Harmony. And I know we're probably losing viewers on, and listeners on this, but bear with me. In the show, they say, yes, you may exhibit this element the most. It does not mean you do not exhibit the other elements at the same time. I apply that to Power Rangers. Amelia exhibits Pink Ranger. 
That's what she was chosen for. However, in this situation, red shown more than pink. That's why she switched colors. I do agree with you. Like, yes, why couldn't she have stayed pink? Ask, ask Simon if he was still on Twitter. However, I roll with me for it. I Brooke is still getting situation. all up in his Instagram comments when he's on vacation in New York City. Is he still? Oh, anyway, uh, that's a that is a podcast for another day. Um, but no, I'm just po- pointing out. I under understand that, and remember too, though we have had a pink ranger. Maybe they were like, we already had that gimmick. Now, but if you so, want to yeah. talk about colors, we're kind of getting ahead of ourselves. But we did warn all y'all. According to Simon, before he did get off Twitter, uh, they wanted to call Zato's new suit the White Cosmic Fury Ranger. But the suits at Hasbro were concerned about a black man being the White Ranger. So he became the Zenith Ranger instead. That is just... Hmm. I have a lot of problems with their logic behind that, but it's episodes later on. I'll, I'll just say that. Anyway. Agreed. Also, I will say... Um, was the was Zato's suit color in Cosmic Fury going to be that shade that they wanted to call white? I don't know, and that might have. I think that might also uh, have been a suit thing, or uh, you know, something from these yeah. suits. Because not having the him be actually that I white. Had, I, I I was maybe trying to give them a little bit of benefit of the doubt because you know the obvious argument is Haley from Ninja Steel, how she was black and a white ranger suit we've seen this we have seen this in other seasons before so i understand the optics not being good is it possible that if there was we we've seen what the issues are with the cosmic fury suits which maybe this is a good time as any to talk about the suits as as a whole not we've seen them in motion we've seen them on the show um i like the color of Zato's suit, the Zenith Ranger suit. I know that's episode four technically, but you know, I like the color of it. It's not white. So I'm wondering that if maybe they tried to make a white Ranger one and when it came to how it appeared on camera with Russell Curry's skin tone, maybe there was a problem. Not to get into too much of a point about this because if you want to search this topic more, there's plenty of resources to do so. Um, there's been a lot of arguments, especially in recent years, about how um, photography for black people and photography for other races is by requirement going to be different. Different lenses are needed, so there's different like things. So I'm just wondering if it was something that they just didn't want to have to spend the time to fix in post, maybe? That's the only that's the only good faith argument I can come up with. If you go back and look at the finale of of Dino Fury, the Ghost Ranger suit, the white is very white. Yes, but there's red around the the neck and the upper chest, so that kind of breaks up from like the skin tone. There's a barrier there, which makes things a little bit easier. But I th- I think the fact that the suits had trouble with him being called the white ranger you know that gives me less of a reason to have uh benefit of the doubt on that one i mean it's just conjecture we don't know the answer at this point so it's something we can all speculate on mm-hmm. obviously it's easy to have a knee-jerk reaction of that's ridiculous but you know yeah. i feel like that's something especially because ninja steel was five years ago now Right? 2018? Mm-hmm. Is that right? Yeah. So Well, it was before Hasbro like, was really fully in control. Yeah. So I feel like that's something that, re- especially because of how many connections they're making in previous seasons, I'm surprised that this has never come up before. Like, who would have yeah. complained about that? I, I so really it makes don't me know. Wonder, it makes me wonder that... Maybe there's some sort of other reason, which is why I mentioned the photography, uh, videography, color correction stuff. Maybe it was something along those lines. But again, I don't know. I'm just speculating. Yeah. Well, moving on to the second episode, Beyond Repair. We haven't talked about Javi's arm yet, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Javi did get his arm blown off, and they really spent very little time on it. Apparently, apparently, again, deliberately. Javi, Javi, you're not diverse enough. Let's give you a disability, too. 
My sister's got a learning disorder, so we got to make sure you match. Zap. But, you know, he, he, he lost it a really cool way. Simon also said they worked very, very exclusively with um, the national organizations about that. And basically, they had the final say of make it very quick. Don't make it like something to dwell on essentially for it um so that's why if anybody has complaints like why wasn't it more focused on why is it that was why okay uh time to talk about something are you going to episode two or is it still on one because i do have one thing on one it's still. a it's a bigger thing uh related to something we were just talking about okay. uh around the time the series released there was a lot of dialogue on Twitter, I know Twitter isn't real life, all that, but sometimes there are things that do make you think. I'm a white guy, so I'm not sure how much right to an opinion I have on any of this. I believe the proper term is Zenith guy. Thank you very much. Well, see, here we go. They consulted with disability groups on how to handle hobby. They were very clear about working with Special Olympics New Zealand. Uh in regards to an earlier episode, but the writing staff is very monochrome. Yes. And I'm not sure if there was an appreciation of how what they were doing with Zato was going to play. Because it's not the first time a Red Ranger of color has taken a different color, a diff different color Ranger power in a subsequent season. And there are fans who took issue with the fact that it appeared to be happening again here. Regardless of what his arc turned out to be, the fact of the matter is that he gets much less to do in this show. And, you know, it says a lot that you know, aside from mentioning what happens in the opening minutes of of the season, we haven't really mentioned Zato since. Yeah, because they uh, the budget got used for him in the first five minutes. <laughs> but I think I will say, and I, I'm trying not to yeah. talk about because mm -hmm. he comes back in episode four. He does. And I feel, like, without going too much into it, because I do want to save it for when we talk about those episodes in a future episode of Ranger Cast. I feel that when he comes back, his power set is so different and so much stronger than the rest of the team that I feel like him coming back as a completely different role is kind of in the same vein as like Ranger versus Knight from Mystic Force. I feel like it's not even a demotion or promotion so much as he's a completely different thing. And I feel like because of that, I don't really take issue with it. I don't see it as demotion so much as a lateral move. Well, I, I think I think even if like regardless of how he ends, if Zato's the actor season... was white, we would not be having this discussion. Yeah, but I think regardless of how the character ends the season, I think it's right to describe his character as de-emphasized compared to Dino Fury. Yes, but I feel like his character, because of what Zato goes through, has an has the correct amount of focus. Mm. He was gone for long enough to have it actually have an impact on the rest of the team where it suited the story enough. The entire first third of the season is among other things focused on getting Zato back. And he was gone for long enough where there were stakes. You felt his absence. If he was just gone for, if he was back by the end of episode one, people would have been annoyed. Be like, well, then what was the point of getting rid of him? He needed to be gone for a certain amount of time. Ollie needed to be evil for as long as he was in order for it to actually, you know, have an effect on things. I, I don't have a problem with Zato's new position with the team, which we will get into later. Because of the new things that he can do. He gets a good chunk of focus in the second half of Cosmic Fury. 
Yeah. And Josh, you said you had something else to say about the first episode? I do. It's unrelated to the, the uh, 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 to Zato. I just want to say, and I know I am probably in a very, very loud vocal minority on this. I thought the Zords were an absolute joke. I thought it, the, agreed. The, the cockpits were cool, but the Zords are some of the ugliest. You could tell it was the same thing of Sam Raimi not wanting to put Venom in Spider-Man 3, but guess what? I have to put it in there because I'm told to. You could tell these Zords sucked. I'm sorry. I, I have no I don't shame have in problem. saying it. I don't have a problem with the Zords, and in fact, I, I'm i quite happy with what they were able to do in terms of brushing out the Kyo or excuse me, the Q-Rangers. I, I, I really, I, I think for all of our hand-wringing about who would pilot what Zord, uh, Billy immediately made that a non-issue. Yeah, I was okay with that. I It was also kind of neat to see, you know, different color Rangers and different color cockpits, which is fine. And Billy um, and the Wolf Zord. Yeah, well, you know, you gotta stick with what you know sometimes, especially if you're looking for familiarity in times of crisis. I will say, I've seen a good, like, a half of Q-Ranger. Q-Ranger's Zords look neat. The Mecha look neat. Q-Ranger's Mecha fights are not very good. So I understand that they had, like, the whole appeal of the Q-Ranger line is swapping things out, where anyone could be an arm or a leg. I And when you have that many Rangers, you know, you had to be able to suit the story with whoever was around to be able to do that. Like, I, I still say that Ryuteo, or the uh, the Cosmic Dragon Megazord, which, again, we we, ha- we haven't seen yet, but you don't know that yet, um, is one of the best-looking combinations they've ever had in Sentai. But the whole appeal is based on the playability, you know, being able to swap out to the combination that you want. But in the show, the fights aren't very good because so much is focused on the mix-and-match aspect of it, which, from a toy standpoint, totally makes sense. You want to emphasize how you'd be able to play with the toy, and it's more the fact that you can, you know, mix and match stuff. People are also a little spoiled because, you know, with the toy lines in particular, uh, Don Brothers and King Ogier, you know, they're really focusing on play value and flexibility and articulation. So I think people may forget that Two Rangers' whole appeal with the toy line wasn't necessarily, you know, mech fights. They weren't that good. So for them to be able to get as many mech fights as they were for Cosmic Fury, uh, I get it. But I do agree that this season, more than others, Zords felt like more of an afterthought, especially because we spent a good chunk of the first episode on Zornia. And they're ugly looking. Yeah. Well, they're ugly because, again, Q Ranger puts so much focus on the Q Tamas, the orbs. And they don't mean anything here. So yeah. if you take off the orbs from any of the Zords, they look terrible. And But the whole symbolism is more the orb than the Zord. So if you but take the Zord gone. fights from any other season, they don't work here. Agreed. Um, I do feel like if there was a way they could have done the season without any Zord fights, I think maybe it would have been better. I'm sure they had to have them in there somewhere, but... I do feel like that this is the most they've ever felt like an afterthought. I agree. They're still ugly Zords. I I have no shame in saying that. No shame! Now moving on for real to the second episode, Mike, you were talking about earlier how you wish Billy would go build some stuff, but in the second episode, he's really settled into this like Zero-era guy-in-the-chair kind of role, working with Solon. They seem kind of like kindred spirits. And... You know, you kind of continuing what happened at the end of the previous episode, uh, catching up with the supporting cast in this case, uh, Morton Garcia, Jane, and Jay Borg. And Izzy uses like that low scene voice. Makes me laugh. The entire scene where it's yeah. pretty much, hey, it's every supporting character. Like, hey, guys, you're not going to have a job after we're done filming. Come in here and get a paycheck. That's what I refer to that oh, scene hey, as. Hey, 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 hey. We forgot something very, 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 very important. Aye, aye, aye. There was a what? lot in episode one. We forgot. We forgot. What did um, we forget? The Morphin Masters gifting what's his name? Uh, um, uh, Ninja Steel Red. We did, yeah. Make make his back, and I I, yeah. I, I did like I did like that. It was a great way to make him part of the action, uh, and make him you know really key player later on. 
Uh, but going back it made to the him second very episode, relevant. Yes. Yeah, going back to the second episode, you know, we got you know, like you mentioned, the Pan Global Games and the Rangers cover stories for being off world. And meanwhile, you have Dewdrop, who was fired in the last episode, going rogue and uh, going up against the Rangers himself. And um, I did think that it was really important to to have Dr. Arcana be there with Amelia when Ollie is, you know, going going crazy in uh that locked room in the um uh in the I base. I love the way they handled that. It showed that Ollie was what? an immediate threat in the room next oh, yeah, door yeah, yeah. and how it affected them, you know, parasocially, mentally. And she was so collected about it. Yeah. It's so great to have her in the show. Oh, yes. I, Ollie's mom is a great character. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and Izzy, at the same time, you know, trying to keep up appearances back on Earth, but also trying to keep this stuff away from Fern, which, you know, is always a bad idea in a relationship, but trying not to worry here. But what I noticed is that they did, you know, with Fern, they did something similar to what they did in the um, in the early photos Oh, excuse me. Let me start that sentence over again. What I what I found interesting with Fern is that this isn't the first time that the show's done this, but in the credits, her uh her shirt is a different under her jacket is a different color than it actually is in the show because in the show it's orange because they you know, they tr- were trying basically in all the uh the pre-release media and all that to hide, you know, Something's going to be very obvious later on. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Yeah, because it's very bright color orange. Yeah. Uh, there was a color correction. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, you... then... Hmm? Oh, sorry. You got it. Go for it. No, I think you were mentioning it. Go ahead. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll mention Fern real quick for a second. Yeah. Um, I really liked how Fern acted. When she was like, surprise, you're on a spaceship now, millions of miles away from Earth. I really don't like Fern's characterization after that because Fern kind of turns into Justin. Because she's like, why Guys, did I like I'm the Blue Ranger? I mean, not wrong. But I feel like she gets over it a little too quickly. Which seems to be a common problem with the show. It's, okay. Again, it's it's you know so ten I, episodes. So I actually support that. I support that fully because I tie that into the yes. I understand we were working with ten episodes. I put that in the same kind of category of things that the show needed to improve on. I add that in of some of the cheesy dialogue Lord Zed had. I would put oh that God. there for it. I'm sick of the show trying to tell us that Lord Zed is so old if he was grabbed from his peak time when he was the most dangerous. He's not that much, he's not even as old he's the same age as he was when we saw him in season 2 or whatever. And nobody, he would never came off as old or out of touch with everything. He seems old to the writers because the writers keep thinking that he's 30 years older than he was in season 2 because they keep forgetting that he plucked him from season 2 time. And that's really a problem because he's not that much older. Well, despite how middle-aged he looked in Countdown to Destruction, Zed was around eons prior. Yeah, so what's another thirty years anyway? Yeah. But well, I, I mean, if like... somebody if somebody like plucked you out of the nineties and you know dropped you into an age of selfie sticks, how would you feel? I wouldn't complain about being old because I would still be young. But you would feel out of touch with the world around you, wouldn't you? See, I love I love that line, actually. I'm not I'm, that... OK. I'm middle ground on that because. I saw it more as a I didn't see him as being old and out of touch. It's more of like oh, stuff has advanced 30 years. Like, there's been a lot of stuff. Like, even remember, Serpentera was as powerful of a Zord as it was. It was still pretty blocky. Then you have them doing all this stuff. Yeah, 
I would say they did the best they could with a culture shock. I mean, you know, them. it's kind of kind of like that joke about, uh, you know, Ion says that he's actually sixty five million years old, and that was that's a when, good line. I enjoyed. Yeah, that. when he watch when he watches Billy charge at the Sentinels with his power land, says, "Look at that young man go." That was well, that was a great line. That was great. But I think it's also a combination of me not liking how they seem to be confused as to how old Zed is because, you know, 30 years or whatever. But it's also the fact that their idea of what is young and hip and current is still 10 years out of date. <laughs> like, selfie sticks have been around since the mid 2010s. Uh, people were filming videos on Vine and musically in, you know, 2014, 2015. So for them to, for the show to have the conceit to make it seem like, what the villains are doing is so fresh and so current and so now it's like in season one of Dino Fury when they kept having Izzy spout out like, OK, Boomer or like all the like the hip catchphrases. It's like it's like Steve Buscemi. How do you do fellow kids? It's like, look, we know what the kids are saying. We're being young and hip and relevant and modern. And it just seems there was, there was you know, a little bit of that in this, uh, you know, in in this season, too. Well, yeah, that, which is what I'm saying. It's like. But they put such a focus on it, and I just like if you're gonna do it, do it. Don't don't sit there and be like, uh, don't put. But so they much... did commit to the bit, though. That's the they good did. part. They, they did. did actually. If they if you're gonna do it, you have to go all in, and I do think they did. Okay, I, I do agree with that. They they did not. They went all in, but it felt very natural for it to be occurred. Like it, I didn't feel like it was forced. If that okay. makes sense. But and going back to Ollie being evil evil after Zed destroys the uh other statues at Dino Henge, Ollie proves his loyalty by giving Amelia an actual cut, which hasn't happened on Power Rangers in a long, long time. And nothing what? absolutely she got nothing a like cut. that. <gasps> Gas. Yes. A cut. Ollie threw a sword at her face. Yeah, threw a sword at her face. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, that was a really cool shot. So you mentioned it. I was waiting for you to mention it. I just want to add real fast before you talk about the cut because you talked about it before. That was one of the most badass scenes of Lord Zed. Um, yeah in the entire show of him showing like we found the base we need you now oh yeah Man, no, no dilly dallying up. correct yeah, no... he's like i'm here straight for business and it's to f y'all up like and he knew boy, exactly he what, the, what their town. weakness is and correct. He, yeah and, and i even like the I, okay and i initially did not like it when he said, I don't know what your powers are, Billy, because yes, you do. It's the power coin, but Zordon's what not around anymore. Is. So yes, I, I understand the, he may not know where the source of the power is regardless, but I know what their powers are. And when they tried to escape, he was like, no, do not let them escape. Bombard these Rangers. What that was classic season two, Lord Zed of take no prisoners. Yeah, he was oh, not it was a great around. scene. Yes, what a great choreography directed uh, screen. Like there was true. I like the um, Amelia's reaction as well. Of get out of here, get as far as you can. How far are we talking? Other side of the planet. Like they under they sold the threat that Lord mm -hmm. Zed was. Kudos well, to them for that. And Ollie in this episode, he also manipulated his mom. Uh, yeah. In the next episode, figure out where the Rangers got off to, because their communications are that cut off. They're clear on the other side of the universe, right? Either like I, I just wanted to before y'all talk about the cut that yeah. had to be highlighted. One of the best things of the entire season was Zed arriving and showing why Lord Zed was a monster. Yes. he that and him single handedly being able to destroy. Uh, the Dino Fury powers. Like, yes, you could talk, say the statues are. You could also say the statues were magically reinforced, whatever. He did a thing that Thrax wanted to do was, oh, I just disconnected. No, he destroyed it. Throwback to Ninja uh, coins getting destroyed. What do you think about Javi's new arm? We talked about him getting the arm blown off, but we haven't talked about his new robot arm. I I liked it. Uh, you know, you know, it takes a little time to get used to, but he eventually comes to understand it as 
a real weapon uh, in the next episode. I, I think it looks really cool, and I think it makes sense of why it looks like it has Solon's color scheme. Agreed. I don't mind the way Javi appears with his robot arm. I don't understand why the robot arm is visible when he's morphed. That makes no sense to me. Because it looks cool. Yeah, but... If Doggy Kruger can have his face smushed in the Shadow Ranger helmet and have nobody be able to tell the difference from the outside, having somebody, you know, have a robot arm should not be visible from the outside. We saw it in Turbo. The morphing, the the morphing grid can grow back can grow back a finger, but you know maybe an arm's a bit of an ask. Yeah, I, I, that that was a little bit confusing to me. But should we move on to episode three, where they actually get the the new suits and uh, they spend their did, time in space? Well, did 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 was there any ranger that had something that morphed with them? In any um, season, like the prosthetics arm, because that's actually a good point. I'm racking my brain of I think that's the first time that's actually happened where it's not a prop or something like that. Like the, the Zeo Wild Power West Rangers. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I don't and think Tassel so. Yeah. did not come stock. Yeah. <laughs> Let me think on that. If I think of something, I will say that. But maybe that's a there's a difference of the Sentai footage to america uh, americanized for it and then the flip side of it being of no this was actually like the first time something like that could not be adjusted or something but if i can think of it, something during the thing i'll let you know if they wanted to be super fan wanky about it they should have made it so it was the uh the same power source as the dino charge uh what's it called uh chase's power up that is an arm essentially the orange one yeah they yeah. should have just done that wouldn't be the most common yeah. reference this show has done. That's true. And it's dinosaur powered. Yeah. The third episode has Billy working on uh, Jerry Rigging powers, just kind of like the old days. Uh, Izzy and Fern have their heart to heart, but uh, Fern is still kind of sidelined. Um, very, uh, very obviously sidelined and very obviously I bummed about it. How do you feel about Izzy essentially turning into her dad this season? I hadn't thought about that. Being hyper-protective. Well, I think she feels a bit guilty. Yeah. I could see that. I, I, I just love how she spent a good chunk of the scene being like, oh, my, my dad's being so annoying, and he's just, you know, he's looking out for us, and I understand. I'm like, you're becoming your parents, kid. <laughs> like... <laughs> I think some of it's full circle, but I think, too, that it's a you see maturity and growth of the character of he wasn't there was no bad intentions with it. And you get caught in the moment. Right. She lied because she wanted to protect her. She's keeping her sidelined because she wants to protect her, even if they both have as many ranger powers at that point, which is no ranger powers. Um, But. I just. It it felt a little little too little too ham fisted, um, and like too obvious about about leaving her sidelined. Um, but they go out to this planet Eridus, which I think was named because it sounds like arid and it's a desert planet. Um, yep. and they go out and discover the scuttle worms, which are terrifying, like legit, like Tim Ion... Burton terrifying. Before they go outside, I love the whole like i said jordan fight i think might be the mvp of the ranger cast this season he has stepped up his game tremendously i really like ion's mentality of i'm extremely upset over losing my best friend i can't fight against evil i need to occupy my mind with something i need to cook that is it that is one of them i know he's an alien but that is one of the most human reactions I think we've ever seen from a character in this franchise because that's very believable. Like, yeah, he's looking for a coping mechanism. Yeah, and we haven't really seen that that much in this show, and I thought that that was a surprisingly mature step. I know I'm mature in Power Rangers, ugh, but I feel like that was good. And I mentioned this uh, off 
recording to tie. I think Off Grid is my favorite episode of the season, just because um, Ion carries a lot. How I love the scene with the scuttle worms, or as I call them, the sandworms from Beetlejuice. They just go out. Oh, I was going to say it's Tremors. Right? I, well, I haven't seen Tremors. I, I Beetlejuice is my uh, frame of reference. I know. Beetlejuice is my frame of reference. Okay? What do you want? I'm not saying but Beetlejuice I, is I love frame everything of about that, and it showed that they could have action scenes be exciting and have nothing to do with Ranger powers. Like, Lost like, Galaxy? Honestly, I did not miss them not having powers in those first handful of episodes. I wasn't, like, was begging good... for them to get the suits. It reminds me of Lost Galaxy when they were investigating the um, um, the abandoned ship. Ah, uh, the rescue mission. Yeah, one where they find the galaxy book. I, I have thoughts on that episode, but this isn't the time or place for that. That's fine, but it reminded me of that. Of It was not about the powers. Right, and I just really liked it. I like the Scuttle Worms as a, as a, as like a recurring villain that are autonomous, they don't have any agency to anything that's going on around them. They just are. I wouldn't even call them evil. That's just when you are a desert creature, you got to survive however you can. Yep. So I totally understand where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. Um are those sentai designs or are the scuttleworms originals? Uh they would have to be sentai designs, right? Um let me check. Let me check Ranger Wiki. Well, they're in a Zord fight, aren't they? One of them is. Yeah, yeah, it would have to be. I feel like it's got to be Q-Ranger. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, they're, they're the Death Worm and the Boss Worm for Q-Ranger. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I really liked that. I, I love the Sand Dune stuff. I love the food. I love the fighting with food. That was really mm -hmm. well done. Yeah, but something I didn't like about this episode... uh. Now, back in Dino Fury, there was a moment where General Shaw contacts the Rangers about a jailbreak at Grid Battle Force. This is something that kind of sets the table for Scrozzle coming back. Uh, and we see, but don't really so much hear, the Beast Morphers Rangers fighting. Now, there's kind of an equivalent moment in this episode. Where Shaw comes where back we, for no reason. Where we see a... Buzz Come blast get your report. Paycheck, Shula. Yeah, we we see a buzz blast report saying that other ranger teams are fighting all over Earth, and then we see General Shaw talking about the situation in Coral Harbor, but we don't actually see these other ranger teams. Even if we don't actually have to see them, see them. We know we know they had the suits. Did it come down to, I guess, like all things, time and money? Why they were telling and not showing? I'm not. Even, I'm not expecting like any of these people to come back for ADR, but just, you know, give us a sense of the, that of, of these Rangers being out there. The only sense that we have is the fact that Billy's around and we see a couple other people morphed, but that's it. It's definitely a case of they, them wanting the increased scope and them kind of forcing themselves to have the increased scope and, you know, the connection, the fibrous mm -hmm. connections between all the seasons without like, making all the prior connections mm -hmm. first. And like then we like, got, oh, man, what can we do now that we're committed to this idea? Right. You compared a countdown to destruction where they didn't really have to tell you who the alien rangers were. Right. But they showed Even if you didn't know. Yeah. You would just see, oh, there's other rangers. This is serious. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And uh, we finally got the actual Cosmic Morphers and the Cosmic Fury Orbs are very much not Q Thomas. They're kind of mentally on the bottom, that sort of thing. Uh, and the, the new morph is actually pretty cool. Uh, I do like the new music they used for it. I hate the morph sequence, how they, f how they flick the orb into the air like it's a quarter. It, and it's I think it looks cool. CGI. It is obvious CGI, I, but it still looks cool. Yeah. Like, you, I, you're I, sitting there fleeing for your life. You have had no powers for a long time. Just put the ball in the morpher. Don't get fancy with it. That's the... How do I want to say this? I, 
I like the Morpher because at first I hated it, and now I like the Morpher based on what they did with it later in the season. Yes. With it, where it's not just a Morpher. I am a okay with what they did. I absolutely despise, and I use the word despise because I hate it so much, the morphing sequence, because I can get behind, okay, you need a little camp. Okay. It's still got to be believable. You're, I'm going to push the button. Okay. We're going to do a pose, push a button on a cell phone. We're going to do a key thing because maybe that's an ancient ritual. No, this was dumb. The, the board thing was one of the dumbest things I have ever seen in Power Rangers. And even I obnoxious laughed and went, it took the suspension of disbelief away from the thing. I said, Agreed. this is dumb. Put the ball in the morpher. That was I dumb. have zero <laughs> problems with it. I mean, it's no that's different fine. from... If, if, if you like it, that's fine. But yeah, I it's agree. It's no different it from, from you know, the times in Overdrive where they'd hold the morpher up, let it go, and it just spin on its own. It's that's no fine. different. I have no... I'm going to disagree because I felt like in, Overdrive when they did that quicker. in Operation... And in Overdrive, I thought it was like winding up like a jack-in-the-box and then release power. Like, it made sense for what they had. This does not make sense to do that. The only way it would make sense is if they actually threw the orb at an enemy and it bounced back and then went into the morpher. Ironi now, ironically, I, like a bouncy I love ball. it, but it, it, to me, the orb is as over-the-top ridiculous as um, Turbo Morph. And I love the Turbo Morph because of how camp and over the top is. Don't get me wrong, so I'm a hypocrite. But it's unnecessary. Put the orb in the Morpher. That's it. <laughs> I think it's unnecessary. It does not need to be flashy. Movements and Jungle Fury's Morph. I mean, like I there, there's a lot, that. like like there's a lot of stuff in Power Rangers that's done just because it's cool, and I have no problem with it on the, on those grounds. But we do. Get I do the agree, tooths. though. The I do agree, though, that the flipping of it looking like a quarter was silly, though. Regardless of that, it it could have been done a little bit better. Of them yes. at least flipping it and catching it instead of it. Like, they made it a point in Dino Fury of you have to get the the uh, movements right and everything to insert the key and spin yes. the morpher and everything. They made that a point. And then this one, every single time? Okay. okay. Even the first Whatever. time. Billy, this was a shit design. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Also, uh, then we finally get the new suits for the first time, and we actually see the suits in motion and on screen. And they're still terrible. I forgot about my issues with the suits after, like, five seconds. The helmets are good. I like the helmets. They're fine. I don't understand why a lot of them have gold mutton chops, but whatever. They needed to change them somehow from the Dino Fury helmets. I completely understand that. They're slightly modified. I think what bugs me the most about the uh, the Cosmic Fury suits is the diamond that kind of comes in towards their belly button from one side. That just seems like adding in a design for no reason other than just to keep... Someone didn't want to clock out right away. They're like, oh, let's just keep going and see what happens. It doesn't mean anything. I get that they have the shoulder pads. I get that it's supposed to be more powerful. It's supposed to be some sort of hearkening back to the Green Ranger shield, how it's supposed to be, you know, an upgrade or whatever. That's fine. But I, as a whole, I just feel like if you took away the helmets, there would be absolutely nothing there to tie it back to the dinosaur theme. Especially when Billy's like, I decided to keep the dinosaur theme because I thought it would fit her. her. And I'm like, besides the helmets, which you barely even changed, they're just generic. It needed... I'm very middle of it because I'm in the middle of... I do agree they are very generic. On the flip side, I didn't have an issue with them when they were used because the colors were vibrant and popped. So you knew yes. who was actually fighting um, for that. So I have no issues. Um, I do I agree. I will say and I, I think did not mind for... the, uh, the puffy muscles. It didn't bother me. So funny enough, that's the thing I did because if you really like... And maybe it, you didn't notice it or anything for it, but when you watch it, I immediately saw too much things like moving around, like the puffy muscles and stuff, um, especially like the abdomen muscles. You can tell it moves around. It's a little sloppy. Yeah. Um, what I I like what they did in Legacy Wars when they released that the week of um, Cosmic Fury. I think if the shield 
was more down the chest, that would have been a much better design for it and would have made it look cleaner. Right now, it's too far up to like the collarbone. It needed to go down yes. to like the where the ribs are at, and that would have been much better. And if they changed the suits from being the matte to like a shinier color, I think that would have made it much cleaner and made them yes. look even better on screen. And That's I will just say my that with the, new, with the new suits, I feel like it works better for certain colors than others. I do think Zato's is the best looking of the bunch, besides even taking away the cape, which whatever. I do like, I yeah, like the, the champagne color. Whatever. But yeah. I feel like it works with the rest of the suit. Um, Amelia's looks fine. I don't really like the green or the, the cough, cough, blue cough, cough that we haven't seen yet. Um, but... Like I said, it. See, I like. I just blue. don't like when, especially because there's not that much difference between the suits, other than the helmets. Which again, the helmets are fine, but when your primary design does not look good with every color that you have it set in, something's wrong. I could see that, but I, I wish there were toys of this very cool stuff. What do you think about the new weapons? Now that we've seen all of them, I'm down with them. I'm indifferent. They're weapons. I have a I have one huge problem with the new weapons, but we can't really talk about that until episode nine. Now, here's something too. We can't talk about this though because Simon revealed this as a part of uh, season three. Season three. Um, Simon did point out that in episode three, Billy was not considered to get new powers because they wanted to keep him in the classic suit. Um, for it because that's his power they did not want to take that away from him for that um but they still want him a major part of the cast and i'm glad they stuck with that yeah absolutely and i i like uh that um if it ain't broke don't fix it i like that they used the most recent morph for him but then added that season three style flourish of the helmet materializing yes yes that was really Um, cool but they didn't do that all the time and I would I wish they'd use the lightning bolt too. I do agree. Um I'm trying to, I'm looking at trying to find pictures real fast of the the cosmic The only theory. other thing I would have possibly thought of for for Billy to get his powers and again this is fan wankery at its finest. Um is the zeal crystal still out there? And if there was just some one thing like how'd you get your powers back Billy? Oh, well, I I managed to tap into the zeal crystal and Sentinel Knight. <laughs> Well, no, the Zeal Crystal would be like, and I was able to get my powers back with the Zeal Crystal, but your powers are still Mighty Morphin. Well, I like them. Well, no, I mean, Mas- I Master, Green, Master Green hooked everybody up. This has already been answered. Yeah, true, but... Um, something... I had to find a picture of it. Something to notice, too, on the suits. I think it works best with red, for sure. Um, definitely black. I do agree it doesn't work with green. It really does not work with gold. Um, and the reason I say that, the whatever flourish they have, with the, the, the um, design you were talking about on the side of the body, it doesn't the one pop that enough. One looks like it's highlighting blends. an abdominal ache in a medicine commercial? Yeah, that. And 20, yeah. Years, 20 years, and they never got gold fabric right. Yeah, it blends in too much with that, and it just does not – it needed to be something different. It needed more design for it. Why they didn't just take from Dino Fury the lightning bolt down the middle, I have no idea um, for that. But, yeah, it, it does not work with every color. Um, I would say Ion easily as the worst suit of the Cosmic Fury bunch. Yeah. I agree. Um, I think it works best with red, black, and blue. It does not work with um, green and uh, gold for sure. Um, what do y'all think of their weapons? I I like them. I think um, I think Javi's weapon, which we technically haven't is an episode we talked about yet, is the most interesting. The but axe. I w- yeah yeah I wish that. Yeah, there was that photo of him, you know, jumping like he, like he's playing a guitar. I wish that we uh, saw them used a bit more. Uh, 
The Morphin Masters only... have a cruel sense of irony if they're going to take away Javi's arm and then give him the t the only one of the weapons that you really need two hands to use. Hey, look, comedy, man. I mean, it's not like it's not like any any of the Rangers has the armadillo puck. Uh, but I would have liked to have seen. Oh, don't be hating on the armadillo puck. Everybody yeah, I, loves I, armadillo zord. Like I would have liked to have seen the weapons' unique properties uh, be shown off more. You wanted Izzy to throw one of her d tiger claws, which are clearly daggers, but they can't call them daggers for some reason, in the air, and then have Amelia just whack it with a hammer? Oh, that would have been cool. I mean, the show has so many restraints on it that I guess maybe there wasn't a that much that they could come up with that he could also do. Yeah, also, what is Ion's weapon supposed to be? Mo's a razor. It's literally everything. It's a razor. It's a claw. The most, it's, it's a, a most, blaster. It's a Rafconian army knife. It dices. But does it slap chop? I mean, he does have experience the in the kitchen, so he could probably make it work. He could. The, um... Here's a question I do have, and they, they don't really answer it. Is this the Dino Fury power? Yes, they say it's Cosmic Fury, but is were the Dino Fury powers genuinely destroyed, and these are just like what we did with the Ninja Coins and the Mighty Morphin suits, or is this a brand new set of powers? Because I'm yes a and no, yes and no, because Billy explains that there's residual energy left in the Dino Keys, and that and the uh, and Master Red Staff are what he uses to create the uh the cosmic curie powers it's a bit like what would it, what the original turbo movie script said would have happened to the zeo powers reverse engineering them to become turbo yeah yeah something like that now here's a question i have gotcha. that has actually been um stuck in my mind for a while and we're going to ignore zato because zato is a completely different can of worms with this uh, for reasons that we'll have to discuss in a future Ranger Cast episode. Do you think the same thing that I do in that the Cosmic Fury powers are actually a downgrade in power from the Dino Fury powers? Yes. I mm. actually had that thought watching as the season went on. And I'm yes, kind of okay don't. with that. It feels more desperate that way, and it adds to the uh, immediacy of the situation. But to be fair... I think that because I, funny enough, you referenced it, uh, Rito, was the turbo powers because the turbo powers are a step down from Zeo and Mighty Morphin. So I feel like this was a what could we jury rig with what we have. Yeah, and they kind of came off that way. Like Billy's like, all right, here's what I could slap together. It Billy worked. made these powers in a cave with a box with of scraps. Of scraps. So I like hey. that they don't come off as... Like every year, you know, it's one of those I'm, diminishing returns. I'm sorry, my, my be mind more is powerful than the previous season, and I like that this time it's not, but it comes off that way. I really appreciate that. I like to, and if you want to build, if you want to build to that, most of them are melee weapons, except for like Gold Rangers. Well, we have the ability to make one weapon that's a ranged weapon. Everything else is like, uh, uh, what's it called? melee weapons which supports that theory because if it was melee or ranged weapons you're going to have more um they're more powerful just in general for that if it's a blaster you can throw a hammer you can but that's not the purpose of a hammer you could also Unless you're throw Thor, but that doesn't you count can throw an mind. axe too obviously stick your arm out we're gonna lead you over to the enemy i'm okay so, with that boy we've gone on a while this I'm is not sure to if talk we talk about, and this is why yeah. we split it up over multiple episodes. Yeah, but I'm not sure if we want to give like episodes grades because we're really grading no. a whole story at the end of the day, aren't we? Normally, I don't mind it, but because of the way that this season is written, because of the way it's structured, yeah. because of the way it was developed, how they had to make it a ten episode arc, I feel like we should reserve all grades for season long, and we should yeah. wait until we've covered all ten. I don't think that this yeah. is a season that you could really justify having individual grades of episodes because it's an overarching narrative. 
Exactly, and I think that like there's maybe one episode that could like stand alone as a contained story, but that's about yeah, it. Yeah, we'll talk about I that would, next I time. Would, I would, I real fast. I would disagree with that. Of you uh, not grading, I would say, does it contribute and move the story? You don't have I to give it a grade, but say like, in a sense, some does, some of it doesn't. Um, is it filler? Does it does it mean something for it? I would say yes in some capacity. You could say like, yes, this was good. It felt natural versus like the buzz blast thing. Like, eh, that could have been left out, but it was not in a detriment to the season like it was to Dino Fury type of deal. That was filler, yeah, but, I mean, but no, it that's did like not reading chapters of a history book. Like they gotta be there. But oh man, that twelfth century. I mean, I don't Ooh, know that was a real you, counter. But I mean, I never like the 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 Roman chapter in my history book versus no no. <laughs> But anyway, maybe that is for in. I always look at it of in the moment. Does it stand on its own? And then as a whole, did it benefit to the thing? Because sometimes they do get worse of like, no, they they lost track of what they wanted to do or something like that. I guess I could say both. So, yeah. So uh, coming up next episode, we're going to be talking about the uh, next three episodes of Cosmic Fury, which would be. Uh, teamwork, rock out, and take off. So that's going to be sometime in the next couple weeks. Now, before that happens, we also have a fun uh, interview that I did ages ago, but kind of kept in the can until an appropriate time uh, with a fandom creator, and I'm really looking forward to sharing that interview with them, with all of you. It's going to be really exciting. We inter- I interviewed the creator behind Bakery Sentai Pond Ranger, a, Senta- a toku-themed idol project. They've done a, a bit of touring on the East Coast, West Coast, and all places in between over the summer, and they are putting out an original song coming up. So be sure to Google them, check them out, and hear their interview uh, in the next episode of RangerCast. So uh, anything you guys want to plug before we go? Oh, I'm no. Fair enough. No. No, nope, right, I got well, nothing to plug. It's just I hope everybody's holidays are going well. Um we're we're approaching near the end of the year. All right. Well, in the meantime, everybody, you can find us at rangercast.net. You can like us on Facebook, like, subscribe on YouTube, follow us on Twitter, and we will see you next time. If you like what you just heard, Find us at RangerCast.net or look us up in your favorite podcast app. Reach out to us on Twitter or leave a voicemail on our website. The opening theme is by Daniel Park. The ending theme is by me. RangerCast is distributed under Creative Commons license. A tribute and share alike. Mm-hmm.